What's going on guys? It's your boy Trolltech here for another video. Based on the title, you can see it's gonna be a different kind of video, a bit more serious. And more than bashing anyone or telling anyone off with this, I just wanna kind of talk about how I've noticed in the one year that I've been involved in the K-pop space, right? I'm new to K-pop, it's only been a year, you know, I've only got into a couple of groups, but I'm just gonna talk about my experiences, what I've seen in my comment section, in the comment sections of other creators, on Twitter, on TikTok, just what I've seen and been faced with in the last year and just how damaging a certain subset of the cable community can be to obviously the broader community, but also the idols themselves. And just, I just wanna talk about all the elements I've seen that make that toxic subset so horribly damaging and i'm going to really do this as if i'm writing an essay like i've really got all my points down i've been preparing this for the last couple of days just because i feel like as time is progressing i'm seeing this behavior more and more and more you know there's been a lot of like events in the last month or so in context to like idols dating and people's reaction to them dating and them going insane. And I'm just like, I really want to make a video about this to talk about just how bad and toxic and just parasocial the K-pop community actually can be. Not the whole community, but there is a large enough subset where we do need to talk about it, I feel like. I think there's four main toxic behaviors that I've seen most prevalent in the K-pop community. And when I say the K-pop community, obviously you can understand I'm not talking about the entire community. It's just easier to kind of refer it to that way. But these are the four main toxic behaviors that I've noticed on TikTok, on Twitter, on YouTube, everywhere. It's not just one app so you can't say oh twitter's like that or instagram's like that i've seen it everywhere so it's inexcusable to say oh no that's that's just twitter you know what i mean so these are the four main behaviors that i've noticed the first one is cyberbullying obviously of both the idols themselves but also of the fans of certain idols so for example i don't know a stay might post something or a army might post something and then the people that don't like that group or whatever it is will attack that person because they're happy about a certain success that that group had, right? It's And this isn't one group that does this to other groups. Like there's so many people from uh, every fandom that does this to every other like fandom, you know what I mean? Like, so it's not just that this group does it and to this group and this group is innocent. No, everyone does it. Like there's a subset in every fandom that does it. So it's not a matter of the fandom of whatever group it is, it's just the a problem and a disease within the community as a whole that we need to kind of deal with and kind of understand so that we can deal with it. The second one is more damaging than the first, in my opinion, and that's spreading fake news to quote, uh, to quote Trump, you know what I mean? Obviously, I don't wanna quote Trump of all people, but that's kind of what it is, like spreading false information, you know, false rumors to, do whatever they want to do. You know, for example, there might be a rumor about a certain idol he did this thing, but there's no proof of that. There's no evidence. It's just, no, this is they're just people making these outrageous statements without any evidence whatsoever. That's one of the most damaging things. Like, for example, people will outright just lie about essay allegations to whatever idol they don't like, for example. And I've seen that so many times in like Twitter threads and like, you know, YouTube comments, like I've seen it everywhere. And I'm just like, there's, you have no evidence to support what you're saying right now, but you are outright being like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this person did this outrageous criminal act with no evidence whatsoever, no allegations by like a specific person. You're just making that shit up because you don't like their music or you don't like them as a, as a person, whatever it might be. That is wildly insane to me. That is criminal behavior. Number three is not as damaging as the first two, but I still think it is a major problem. And that is the gatekeeping culture that has ar arisen within the K-pop community. And I think I've felt this more than anyone. Well, not more than anyone, but I felt this like personally, like whenever I get into a new group, for example, there will be a subset of people being like, oh, you're just jumping on the bandwagon or this or that. Like when I first started listening to BTS, for example, there was a pretty large subset of people that 
were just telling me off and being like, oh, you're a fake fan, oh, this is a fake reaction and this and that because I was listening to BTS, who's a popular group, right? That's, it's very prevalent to new fans, especially, I feel like, which obviously gets new fans, they get into this, this interest that they have, K-pop, whatever group it is, and they're like, oh, I'm excited to get into this. And then, you know, they start talking about it on social media and then they get bombarded by these haters like, oh, you're a fake fan, you know nothing, you're a baby. How can you have any opinions if you don't even know anything about it? You know, that type of behavior I think is very prevalent. Like I experienced something um, actually, it wasn't directed at me in particular. Like I wasn't, it wasn't said to me on any of my platforms, but I remember finding like a Reddit post and people were talking shit about my opinions because I said that, you know, I didn't, I remember not liking a song by 80s and people were like, oh, how, how do you know what song is good if you've only listened to two groups? I'm like, just because you didn't listen to a lot of groups does not mean you can't have an opinion on whatever music you listen to. That's crazy. Like, it's not school, bro. You don't need to read 15 lecture slides to have an opinion on music. But I think in conclusion, what I'm trying to say, the gatekeeping community, uh, the gatekeeping pandemic, let's call it within the K-pop community, I think really limits what K-pop can be in the context of like fandoms, but also it works against what your favorites are doing, you know, because they want exposure. They want to be shown to other people that aren't just in that bubble of K-pop, you know? So it's crazy to me gatekeeping because if you want your artists whether it's bts or stray kids or in hypen or whatever if you want them to get that level of success then gatekeeping is directly opposite to what your desire for their success is you know what i mean so it it really doesn't make sense to me and it's just frankly stupid okay this is the not the last point when the last problem i think is the most important and just the most disgusting behavior, I think. And that is the obsessive behaviors of some fans towards certain K-pop idols or certain groups and, you know, feeling like that you own their, I don't know, their time or you own who they are. Like, for example, people that get mad when an idol reveals, oh, they're dating or or they're smoking or drink or whatever. You know, remember there was that whole controversy when Jungkook was smoking and everyone was like, why is he smoking? Like everyone was being a little bitch about it. I'm like, he's a grown man. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. First of all, I don't give a shit what he does, to be honest. Like, because my context, the way I view it with these K-pop idols, I don't give a shit what they do in their private lives, bro. I just like, do you make good music? That's enough for me, bro. I don't care what you do with your life. Date who you want, drink what you want, smoke what you want. You are an adult human being. And this almost ownership that a lot of fans feel that they have over these cable vitals is so damaging, first of all, but it's, it's disgusting behavior. Could you imagine? Let's say there's a normal person on the street and you feel insulted when they go on a date with someone. That would be crazy. That's a crazy person thing, right? That's a crazy person thing. But certain fans feel like this is acceptable behavior just because this person is famous. I think the desensitization of the humanity of these idols is an issue. Like, for example, when people look at the members of BTS or the members of these big famous groups, they don't even view them as humans anymore. They view them as this kind of side kind of piece thing that they can manipulate as they want, they can control as they want, that... This person doesn't have emotions, doesn't have feelings, doesn't have desires of their own. They treat them like these moving pieces that they can manipulate as they wish. And that is so disgusting. There's such damaging, disgusting behavior. And it's, I think, the number one problem, especially right now, that is controlling the K-pop community, which is why I'm so happy that these idols now are outright just being like, I'm dating this person and I don't give a fuck what you say. Like, I love that because it's finally fighting back against this rhetoric by these toxic motherfuckers that feel like they have ownership of the idol's private time and private lives. Okay, now I want to kind of talk about what these four issues within the K-pop community do and how it impacts K 
K-pop as a whole and the community and the fandom as a whole. I think the number one thing, obviously, it creates this hostile environment that prevents new people from getting into K-pop. You know, let's say you listened to a song by 80s and you're like, oh, this is really interesting. And so you decide to go into the community, kind of look around a bit, and then you see this hate and this rage and this, you know, these wars between like someone saying, oh, 80s is this or, or Stray Kids is this and this and this and just pointing fingers and just this anger. If I'm getting into it for the first time, I'd be like, uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna go back to what I was doing before. I'm good. I don't want to get involved in this drama. I have no intention to get involved in it. And it unfortunately happens quite a lot. Like I've talked to so many people who was like, yeah, I was interested in K-pop like years ago, but I never fully got into it because of just that toxic toxicity that I could feel seeping from a lot of fans. And so it took me like years and years before I got into K-pop. That happened to me. Like I was getting into K-pop when I was a teenager, like I was about to. And I remember I was faced with that toxicity. I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm not getting into that at all. And it took me until I was 27 years old to finally be like, you know what? I'm just going to start listening to it and try to ignore that toxic side of things. So it is a massive impact in the growth of the K-pop John Ryan community, in my opinion. Obviously, the number, the second effect is mental health. I think this is something I've been noticing um, lately. Like, so I go, on, I went on TikTok the other day, for example, and there was a lot of K-pop content creators who was like, you know what? I stepped away from the K-pop community for two weeks, and I came back, and just everything was so much better. My mind was clearer. My mental health had way less issues. Like, I just felt lighter. And that goes to show that if these K-pop creators who are interacting with these communities every day feel like their mental health is getting sapped as a result of the behaviors of these communities, you need to know there's an issue there. There's a problem if you, you need to take a step back sometimes. Because I do. Like sometimes I won't upload for two weeks because I really do need to take a step back and be a human again outside of the K-pop stuff because it gets, it does get quite intense and damaging sometimes. That's not even like putting in the mental health in, of the idols themselves. Because imagine if you're an idol, right? And you've already stressed out about working hard and dancing and singing and doing all this stuff. Then you've got to deal with people talking shit about you because you've decided in your private life, oh, I'm going to date someone or I'm going to let them seem off and have a drink at the club. Like that is crazy. Could you imagine the pressure and the mental health struggles you would go through if the time that you just wanted to relax people started like talking shit about you and saying, oh, like you betrayed your fans because you decided to have a drink with your boys at the club. You know what I mean? So it's damaging both for fans, mental health wise, and the idols themselves, which is shit on both sides. Also, another impact, which I have, I think just really entered my brain right now is the fact that the infighting and the, you know, BTS fans fighting the stays or the stays fighting the... 80s fans or the, whatever, whatever it is, right? I think the issue there is you, you're fo so fo focused on defending your group or defending whatever group's being attacked that you can't even enjoy the music or the performances anymore. It's become more than what it needs to be. At the end of the day, what it needs to be is enjoying music, enjoying performances. But all this fighting takes away from the effort of the idols who work day in and day out, try to give you this good performance, give you these good songs. But all you're focused on is defending your group or fighting against another group. That is so damaging and it just ruins the fun and the vibe of what these idols and this industry is trying to present to you. Another major impact that I've noticed is it damages the community from an external viewpoint. Like for example, when people now talk about the K-pop community, all they talk about is, oh, the fans are insane or there's so much drama and there's so much toxicity. That's all people outside of the K-pop community feel towards it. Like I've got friends who are not in that community and that's their you know view of it. That's their external view of it is, oh, it's toxic. There's so much drama. The fans are crazy. Like that is the external view. Like unfortunately, 
that is what it is. Obviously, being now in that community for a year, that is a false view of because that's just a small a minority. But that is what everyone outside of it sees because that's the loudest minority. You know what I mean? And it's it's a hard thing, right? Because obviously there's so many of these issues, but it's one of those things that is kind of hard to really heal. I think the only way to really heal those issues is to hold people accountable. That's why on my channel, I do try to always hold negative, toxic comments accountable because if you don't, they remain unchecked and they continue to exhibit this behavior. They might not exhibit it on your channel. They might exhibit it somewhere else and it still exists. If we don't hold people accountable, whether it's in this K-pop toxicity or just any in life in general, then that behavior will be left unchecked. My opinion of it is you need to cut it root and stem right there, right then. You need to execute the plan there for that behavior to stop because otherwise these cowards, these fools, these absolute pieces of garbage who look like humans will continue their behavior, their toxic behavior, their unhealthy behavior, and it will just continue to grow like a parasite. So my opinion of it is if you see that behavior, whether it's on Twitter or on YouTube or on Twitter, I mean, on TikTok, you need to cut it root and stem there. You need to crush them underneath your heel. Otherwise, they will rise like a parasite. That's just my opinion. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was something different, but I really felt like it's a topic that we need to really talk about and shed a lot of light on if we want the community to become a better, healthier place. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.